This is the lesson that I'm going to be giving on Monday. This is your warm up. I want you to go ahead and do one, two, and three. If one, two, and three is something you absolutely cannot do, you need to be working on these bottom ones. Go ahead and pause the video and get started. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solve these right now. I'm going to start with this one. This is the algorithm for multiplication, and I'm going to put up the four song, hoping you don't need it anymore. I'm going to cover up everything but the number that I'm working with. If I sing the four song for two fingers, it takes me eight fingers. Zero times four, zero times anything is zero. Four times six is 24. There are three steps that I have to do before I go on. The first is erase the numbers at the top. There aren't any. The second is cross out the number you're through with. And the third is make a happy face directly underneath the X. Now I'm going to multiply by two. Two times two is four. Two times zero is zero. Two times six is 12. There are three steps I have to do before I go on. First is erase the numbers at the top. There aren't any. Second is cross out the number I'm through with. And the third is make a happy face underneath each X. The happy faces hold the place values. So that's what I want you to be doing. And then I'm going to be multiplying by fives. Five times two is 10. Carry the one. Five times zero is zero, plus the one is one. Five times six is 30. Now all I gotta do is add them up. Okay, now you can tell that your problem has decimal points. So the strategy is underline how many numbers are behind the decimal point in the problem. That's how many are behind it in the answer. Okay, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to go over to this. Here are the steps of division. I'm going to cover up everything but the number that I'm working with. Before I do that, I need to float that decimal point up. He goes straight up. Okay, now I can ignore him. How many groups of four can I get out of nine? Two. Two times four is eight. I have one left over. Down comes my next number. How many groups of four can I get out of 16? I can get four. Make sure you're lining your numbers up. There's one above the nine. There's a number above the six. You line them up, keep them neat. Four times four is 16. I have nothing left over. Down comes my six. How many groups of four out of six? I can get one. One times four is four. I have two left over. Can I have a remainder? No, I cannot because I have a decimal point. So I add a zero and I drop it down. And I can get five groups of four out of 20. I have no remainder, so my answer is two and 415 thousandths. Okay, here's the last one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to float the decimal point straight up. Now I'm going to cover everything but the number that I'm working with. I can't get any groups of 40 out of 9 because 40 is bigger than 9. I have 9 left over. Down comes my next number. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover one, and I'm going to cover one. How many groups of four can I get out of nine? I can get two. Now I'm going to take the covers away. Two times 40 is 80. I have 16 left over. Down comes my next number. I'm going to cover one. 
and I'm going to cover 1. How many groups of 4 can I get out of 16? 4. When I multiply, I have to multiply by 40. So I have 40 times 4 is 160. I have 6 left over. I cannot have a remainder. So I add a 0 and I bring it down. I'm going to cover 1 and I'm going to cover 1. How many groups of 4 out of 6? 1. So above that 0, I'm going to write a 1. You know what? I'm going to erase this because it's in the way. But when I multiply, I have to multiply by 40. 1 times 40 is 40. I have 20 left over. I need to add a 0 and I need to drop it down. Now I'm going to cover 1 and cover 1. How many groups of 4 out of 20? 5. But I have to multiply by 40. 40 times 5 is 200. And that's what we have. And finally, we have no remainder. So I'm done adding zeros and dropping them down. OK, these are the songs. Um, for this video, I'm not going to sing them. If you go to the menu, I have now added a place for you to practice the songs. I prefer for you to do these songs at least twice until they get memorized. You should have the threes and seven memorized. If you don't, get it done and get it done. Six is kind of new, but not that new. Okay, Andy had $250 in his checking account. He withdrew $80 to pay the water bill. He deposited $50 the next day. He used his debit card to buy groceries for $82. What was his bank account balance after these transactions? The best strategy I can think of is first to underline, you'll have a test paper in front of you tomorrow, underline the numbers so you don't skip any of them. By reading it, determine if these numbers are positive or negative and then go ahead and solve it. Pause the video and do this yourself. Okay, I'm going to look at this problem. If it said Andy had $250, well, that's positive. It didn't say he owed it. It says he has it. He withdrew $80 to pay the water bill. That's negative. That takes money away from him. He deposited $50 the next day. That is a positive number. He used his debit card to buy groceries for $82, and that's negative. And I want to know what his bank account balance was after these transactions. So I'm going to put positive 250, negative 80, positive 50, and negative 82. So this is the most important thing is did you get these right? Then you underline two at a time. The signs are different, so I subtract. So this is 170. I use the sign in front of the biggest digit and I bring everything else down. The signs are the same, so I'm going to add. So it's 220. It's positive because I use the sign in front of the biggest digit. I bring the rest of the problem down. These are different, so I need to subtract. So let me give myself some room here. So I'm going to go 220 
minus 82. This is why you needed to learn how to subtract. I cannot take 2 away from 0, but I can borrow. He becomes a 1 and he becomes a 10. When you make your fist 2 and you count up to 10, it's 8. I can't do this in the tens column. I can't take 8 from 1, but I can borrow. Mark him out, make him a 1, put the 1 in front of the number behind him. Make your fist 8, count up to 11, and it's going to be 3. And then 1 minus nothing is 1. So Andy had $138 in his checking, in his checking account. The temperature in Dover, Maine started at 8 degrees below zero in the morning. The temperature rose 10 degrees before it dropped 15 degrees. What was the temperature then? Pause your video and solve it. Okay, I'm going to get the dude with the tongue stuck on the lamp post out of the way. Going to underline the numbers that are important. Okay, the, the temperature started at 8 degrees below zero. The below zero here tells you that this is a negative number. The temperature rose 10 degrees. If you rise, if something rises up, it goes into the air. Before it dropped 15 degrees. So it's a negative. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and solve it. The signs are different. I subtract. I use the sign in front of the biggest digit. And I bring everything else down. The signs are different. So I'm going to subtract. I'm going to use the sign in front of the biggest digit. So the, the answer is 13 degrees below zero. The scores of six students in a contest are listed in the chart. What was the sum of these scores? Pause your video and solve it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write these numbers. So Trevor is a positive 8, negative 5, negative 3, positive 10. If this is confusing, put the positive sign in front of it so you know it's a positive number. Positive 2 and negative 7. Now I'm going to make sure that I did that right. Negative 8, negative 5, negative 3, positive 2. Okay, it's right. Underline two at a time. The signs are different. I subtract. I use the sign in front of the biggest digit. I bring the rest of the problem down. The signs are different. I'm going to subtract. There is no sign for zero. I bring the rest of the problem down. Zero plus 10 is 10. Use the sign in front of the biggest digit. Doesn't matter whether you subtract or add. The only digit there is 10 and it's a positive number. Bring the rest of the problem down. The signs are the same. You add. Use the sign in front of the biggest digit. Bring the rest of the problem down. The signs are different. You subtract. You use the sign in front of the biggest digit. So their, the sum of their scores was a positive. I want you to go ahead and rewrite this. First write it down, and then rewrite it without the hand holders. Use your notes, and then solve it, and tell me what the answer is. Pause the video and do it now. Okay, I'm going to get rid of my hand holders. I'm going to clean this problem up so it's easier to look at and easier to solve. There's no hand holders with negative 10. The parentheses are there because it's supposed to help you understand it better. 
I want to get rid of them. So down comes my negative 10. Here are my hand holders. They're the same. I replace it with a positive and bring down the 2. I see more hand holders. They're the same. I replace it with a positive and bring down the 5. And there is no hand holder in front of the 8. So this is my cleaned up problem. These two problems are equal. But the second one is easier to solve because you got rid of your hand holders. Okay, I'm going to underline these two. The signs are different. I subtract. I use the sign in front of the biggest digit. Everything else comes down. The signs are different. You subtract. You use the sign in front of the biggest digit. The rest of the problem comes down. The signs are the same. You add and you use the sign in front of the biggest digit. So the answer to that problem is a negative 11. Okay, I want to know which one of these problems matches that graph. Pause it and look at it. Okay, this is what I told you. I told you that in order to model these kinds of problems on the number line, the first number should not be negative. That, that's it. I just don't see how you could possibly do that. Now, it is possible with A that I could flip these. I could put the 2 in front and the negative 3 behind. I could do that if I wanted. And that would make it, a, I guess, a possibility. But there's no way it's B. It can't be B. And I'm going to tell you in this case it's not A either. The other thing that I would tell you to do is to solve these problems. Like here, you have 3 times a negative 2. The signs are different. You see them. It's in the multiplication section of your notes. The signs are different, so the answer is negative. And 3 times 2 is 6. Well, doesn't this end with a negative 6? I mean, so that's a possibility. Let's solve D. Again, it's multiplication. The signs are the same. There's an invisible positive sign there. And that makes it a positive 6. It did not end up there, so it cannot be D. This is 3 times negative 2. Well, here's 1 time negative 2. Here's 2 times negative 2. And here's 3 times negative 2. Let's try it one more time. Again, pause the video and find the correct equation for that uh, modeling. One of the first things I do when I get problems like this, I'm not sure if you think it's smart, I do, is to go ahead and solve them. At least find out where they're supposed to end because this modeling this on the graph has to end in a positive 6. So I look at A. Well, the signs are different. You're multiplying, so the answer has to be a negative, and 3 times 2 is negative 6. All right, look at B. Um, the signs are the same. You are multiplying, so the answer has to be a positive, and 3 times 2 is 6. OK, I'm going to go over to C. The signs are different. You're multiplying, so the answer has to be a negative, and 3 times 2 is 6. And I look at D. The signs are the same. It's multiplying, so I know it's a positive, and 3 times 2 is 6. Well, I can get rid of these two, because this problem does not end there. It doesn't. All right, now I'm looking at the last two. And then I remember, oh yeah, you can't start with a negative number. That's not going to work. The correct answer is B. OK, let's look at this one. Daniel was on the fifth stair. He walked up eight stairs and then descended ten stairs. Finally, he ascended six stairs. What step was he on? So go ahead and do your best and come back when you're ready to find the answer up. OK, I'm going to start looking at this. It says that Daniel was on the fifth stair. 
Well, that's a positive five. That's where he started. He walked up eight stairs, positive eight. And he descended 10 stairs. Well, descend means going down, so it's a negative 10. Finally, he ascended six stairs. That goes up. All right, now I'm just gonna solve it to find out what step he was on. The signs are the same. I add and I use the sign in front of the biggest digit. Everything else comes down. The signs are different. So I go over here and I subtract. Remember to do it over to the side if it's more than just one digit. So that is three and he's on a positive one. So now he's on the third step, bring the rest of the problem down. But then he ascends or goes up six stairs. The sign to the same, you add, use the sign in front of the biggest digits. It's a positive nine. He's on the ninth step. Okay, let's try the next one. Okay, here are the positive and negative integer notes. You're gonna need them for the test tomorrow. They need to be in your journal at home. The way you work these notes is you always get rid of the hand holders first. So you start at the bottom down here. And then once you get rid of the hand holders and the problem is cleaned up and easy to read, then the next thing you look for is anything that looks like a multiplication or division sign. If you see that, you stay in this section of your notes and follow these rules. If you don't see a multiplication or division sign, then you go up to the top part and you're with the adding and subtracting. So we're gonna practice some problems and then we're gonna call it a day. So here you have um, these problems. Go ahead and try one through three first. Pause your video. All right, so this is what you would do for the first one. For number one, do you see any hand holders? No. Do you see anything that looks like multiplication or division? Absolutely you do. This is multiplication. Therefore, you're in the middle part of your notes. Are the signs the same or different? They're the same. Therefore, this answer, the answer is gonna be positive. And eight times two is 16. I'm looking for the, the sign to be correct. That's the challenge, not multiplying eight times two. Okay, look at number two. Do you see any hand holders? I don't either. Do you see anything that looks like multiplication or division? Yes, that's division. You're in the middle part of your notes. Are the signs the same or different? They're different because there's an invisible positive sign here, so this answer is gonna be negative. I'm gonna go ahead and remember to put the 12 in, put the four out, sing the four song. It takes me three fingers to get to 12. So the answer is negative three. Okay, now we're gonna look at the next one. Do you see any hand holders? Yes, we're gonna get rid of them. I'm gonna replace this with a positive and I'm gonna replace these with a negative. Okay. Do you see anything that looks like multiplication or division? Me neither. You're at the top part of your notes. The signs are different. You subtract. You use the sign in front of the biggest digit. The answer to this problem is negative three. Now I want you to try four, five, and six on your own. Pause the video. Okay, number four. Do you see any hand holders? Me neither. Do you see anything that looks like multiplication or division? Yes, you're in the middle part of your notes. Are these signs the same or different? They are the same. Therefore, the an I'm sorry, I lied. They are different. Therefore, the answer is going to be negative. And 24 divided by 8 is 3. 
Okay, so the answer is negative three. Let's look at number five. Do you see any hand holders? Let's get rid of them. I'm going to replace this with a negative, and this one is fine, so I'm going to bring it down. Are the signs the same or different? They are the same. I'm going to add them together. It's 24. And then I'm going to use the sign in front of the biggest digit. Your answer is negative 24. And here's the final one, number six. Do you see any hand holders? Me neither. Do you, any, do you see anything that looks like division? Yes, this is a division sign. You're in the middle part of your notes. Are these signs the same or different? They are different. There's an invisible positive sign. So the answer is going to be negative. And six divided by two is three. The answer is negative three. Okay, so you have a test tomorrow. Um, I want you to go back and watch the videos from last week in its learning if you need extra help. The test will be in its learning. If you are absent, I still expect you to take the test. You need to take it during your class period. If you are deathly sick and your mother messages me that you are too sick to turn on your computer, then I guess I will give you a makeup, but I'm doubting you are too sick to do it. So I expect to see you in class tomorrow. Good job.